I recently watched an interview with a fellow by the name of um, Joe DeSena. Uh, Joe DeSena is a, an author and the CEO of uh, something called the Spartan uh, Race, kind of a fitness guy. And in, it, in this interview, uh, he talk, it was on Joe Rogan, he, t he talks about um, an experience he had as a 12, 13 year old kid where um, in the neighborhood he grew up in, one of his neighbors was a mobster. He was a uh, mafia. And this guy, when he fi found out that Joe's parents were, were divorcing, he wanted to sort of mentor him a little bit and give him a, give him a chance, give him a, uh, do him a favor. Maybe not a great thing coming from a mobster. Anyway, he hired him to clean his pool. He was really nice to him. He gave him advice that Joe has kept his entire life. He never tried to get him into the mob. He never tried to get him involved in, in criminal activity. He just wanted to look out for him and he wanted to provide uh, a, a place where, where Joe could go, a place that Joe could count on while his family was going through so much turmoil. My name is Ed Trevers. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia, in the awesome parish of Christ Church Shelburne that sits on the ancestral and the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And today, I want to ask you a favor. I want to ask you to reserve your judgment. I want to ask you not to hold people to your standards. I want to ask you to let people surprise you. I'm going to tell you a couple of quick stories. Uh, the first is, uh, I was driving up from North Carolina with my kids, with my family, and we were driving this little uh, Ford Escort wagon. Great little car, uh, but it was loaded to the teeth. I mean, we had two small, uh, two small toddlers, and there were play pens, and there were diapers, and there was groceries, and there was luggage in there. I, I think we might have had a dog or two at the time. The, li the poor little escort wagon was just chocked full of stuff. And while we were driving through Connecticut on whatever the big major I highway is, we got a flat tire. So I had to pull over on this incredibly busy, just absolutely bumping highway. And I had to change the tire. The next thing you know, I see these red, white, and blue lights, they come up on behind me, and I'm thinking to myself, given the way my day is going, I'm about to get a ticket too. I thought, that's it, he's gonna give me a ticket, He's because he, I'm not supposed to, you're not supposed to pull over to the side of the road like this. I didn't have any choice. So the guy gets out in this great big burly, you know, uh, marine haircut having uh, state trooper. He walks up to me. Get back in your car. So I'm thinking, but I got a flat tire. I understand. Get back in your car. And then he proceeds not only to unload, not only to change the tire, but to load the escort back up and put us on our way. He actually found us a garage uh, within driving distance on, on, the, on the spare, on the donut, that had a tire for us completely, completely blew away my expectations of what was going to happen in that moment because of what I thought this highway patrol officer might do. The second story I have, and this one has stayed with me, uh, must be, it, this story has stayed with me for 30 years, longer. When I was a kid, uh, one of my teachers used to organize our, uh, our school to do a fundraiser for uh, a hospital called the IWK, uh, the Isaac Walton Killam Children Hospital in Halifax. And they would do a fundraiser every year. It'd be this huge big telethon. And when you made a donation, your name would come across the bottom of the screen. And so, of course, we did the, big, we did the fundraiser through the school. We raised all kinds of money. And on that Saturday uh, morning, I was glued to the TV. I wanted to see my school's name come across the, the Chiron on the bottom. 
And one of the people, you know how they, they have people come on uh, with, their, with their big donations. They, they bring them on TV and they thank them personally and all that other stuff. Well, one of these groups that they brought on with this, you know, holding a great big check for like $10,000 was the Hells Angels. The Hells Angels had made a $10,000 donation to the IWK Children's Hospital. Now, growing up, the Hells Angels was, that's, that's a criminal organization. They sell drugs. They, they do all kinds of bad things. They're violent. They've got guns and, and, and tattoos. <laughs> but my expectations, the standard that I assumed these Hells Angels to live to was completely wrong. It was, it was absolutely erroneous. Not because they aren't involved in that stuff. But the standard I was holding them to was that they, they don't do anything good. That all they do is bad. That they're bad and that's it, period. These aren't the guys that would give a check to the IWK. These are guys that would steal a check from the IWK. That's not the entirety of who they are, is it? Like Their, their, their criminal activity is not the entirety of who they are. Now, I'm not holding them up as, as heroes of the community, but I am saying within them is compassion and love, sympathy, understanding, a desire to make our world a little bit better. Now, I know if you're watching this, these two things come in this they come in this weird juxtaposition beside each other. How can criminals, how can drug dealers, how can people involved in prostitution, how can whatever else they might be involved in, I'm not even certain, but how can these people that we think are involved in all kinds of, the, all kinds of horrible things, how can they possibly do anything good? When we hold people to standards, and, and Jesus tells us not to, the Bible tells us not to, judge not lest ye be judged. When we hold people to standards that we think are applicable, we don't give them the opportunity to surprise us. We don't give them the opportunity to show us that in some ways we must be wrong. In our world, you're going to come across very few people who are always going to fit in the box that you build to contain them. There are very few people in our world that will always fit within the expectations that you have for them. There are very few people in this world that will always meet the standards that you apply to them. Sometimes they'll exceed them. Sometimes they won't. But if you don't give them an opportunity, if you don't give them a chance, they'll never be able to surprise you. Not because they will only live by the standards you, you set on them, but because you won't ever be able to see it. See, when you judge somebody, when you, when you hold somebody to, to a standard or have an expectation for somebody that, that they must achieve, that they must meet, Anything else is disappointment. Give people a chance. Give people a chance. No matter what their past may be, no matter what their uniform is, no matter where they come from, no matter what their language or religion or, or, or anything else, give them a chance. Give them a chance. They may surprise you in the most wonderful ways. And because you give them the chance, you may also be giving them the opportunity to experience this life in a new and much more fulfilling way. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up his countenance upon you. And may you know the peace of 
being in God's presence. And I pray that as you do not want to be held to this held to the standards of others, you will not try to hold others to yours. Let them surprise you. Amen.